Hello, I am Lizzie with Long Distance Gamers, and today I'm going to be talking about Comic Book Bubble. Now, this is a family-friendly economic game where you're going to be buying and selling comic books from uh, Red 5 Comics. It talks about the uh, in the late 80s and early 1990s, the comic book industry found itself a giant collector's boon. Old vintage comics were now worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, and people started looking at comics just as much as an investment as a source of pleasure. However, as the number of collectors and investors grew, so did production. It wasn't long before the bottom fell out and the golden years of making money in comics ended. The comic book bubble officially burst in 1997 when even large comic companies declared bankruptcy. Are you savvy enough to make money in the before the bubble bursts? So we'll go ahead and talk about how this plays and what I think about it. So here we have the game set up for two players. We have each of the player boards. Each player has 20 money, and they've been given three starting comic book cards. We have the comic book cards shuffled and put in here. And then here we have just randomly drawn and put them starting from this star symbol and, of course, moving up until it's done. And then in year one, we place these in relative order as far as where the tokens ended up randomly. So then what each players will do simultaneously is they will choose two of their starting comics and go ahead and put them in their catalog spots. So I might choose these two because the exclamation point's really high so I can get a lot of money and that symbol's high. And yeah, so we'll go with those two. This one will get returned to the box. And for over here, ooh, we have Zap Pop Pow and Boom Poof over there. Okay, so pink's looking good. Um, that's nice. So maybe they'll choose the ones with the pinks. Try to focus on pink for a bit. And then I guess this goes back in there. Then what will happen is five cards will be dealt to each player. And then the game will begin by each player simultaneously choosing one of these cards to play. So you can choose to buy, activated superpower, or speculate. If you buy, you will just place the card in the buy section, and this is of course simultaneous, so you will just choose your card, and then when everyone says reveal, you'll reveal it into the spot. You will just go through and add up the three symbols on these. So the pink right here is $3, this is $0, and $4, so you would spend seven of your dollars if you wanted to do that. The minimum value does have to be at least one dollar. It says right there. So if you do buy, you can no longer sell anything that round, so you might want to wait. And if you do buy, once you pay the money to the bank, you'll put that right into your thing in your catalog slot. You can only hold three catalogs ever. Uh, and the superpower, all of these cards have a symbol at the bottom, it would activate that superpower. So we'll go over the few ones that there are. So this one, it would just mean that that symbol minuses three spaces. You can never place them on top. So it would go one, two, three. It's just two different symbols. You always uh, start from left to right. So we would start by moving that. So we would go one, two, and one, two for the rest of this round anyone that sells anything dealing with that symbol would make two more dollars so right now it's worth 12 but for the rest of the round it'll be worth 14 assuming it doesn't move uh, and then this you could add five to the lowest so you would take whichever one is the lowest which is actually this one and you would go one two three four five and then this one is the same as that except then that one's the one that will sell for more for the round uh this one see how it has a lock symbol in that so for that turn this could no longer move so if this was up here before we played at the same time we played this then this card would have no effect because even though it does have a minus there this lock symbol prevents it from going off this just means that you will be switching the highest one, you'll follow it with its uh, same symbol, so it would just move to right there. And then this is just another one of those minuses, another one of those locks, just a different symbol, and different symbols for moving those. So that's basically how you would go, and I'm not sure how the five of these went. And then speculate, 
would be if players do that, they would go there. Maybe this player did not. Anytime that you have less than three cards drawn for the Speculate, you would pull one of these cards from the top of the deck. So then we can put these Speculate cards here. Then we will just go through this gender speculation order. So we start here. We don't have any of those. We do have one pink. So the pink will go ahead and move up one space. Okay. And then the yellow, we have one, two, three, four. It would move up four. So one, two, three, and whoosh to four. We don't have any of the question marks. And then we do have the exclamation points for that. So that would move. And then that final one. Now, of course, if there were any of those locks, so if this had been played, then this would not have moved during the speculation. Once everyone's done and the speculation is done, everyone can sell. So you can choose one of your catalogs, one of your comics in your catalogs and choose to sell it for some money. So maybe this person would want to sell, you could only sell one per turn as long as you have not bought for that round. So this person not bought this round so they can go ahead and sell so they will look at the current value so we have 16 and 12 so they will get 28 dollars from the bank so they will just take the 28 and add it to their money and then this gets turned over and placed right here once everyone's done the cards will swap these will get discarded and you will look at your new cards. Now, if you do are playing with more than two, you would be just drafting these cards and just going around in a circle. So then you would just choose a new card and go ahead and play. Once you reach the point that you only have one card remaining, the end of the round will occur. A few things will happen. First, this year two will go into the current order. So purple will be moved up to here. Pink would come down here. And it's just in relative order from top to bottom. It doesn't matter if they're going up or coming down. Uh, so you just move them as they are. So then we will move this over to year two and then we can go ahead and start the new round. Now you will be given four cards to each player because they already had the one. So they will start with five cards at the end of the round or at the beginning of the round and then go through and play this. And the same thing will happen for year three and year four. At the end of year four, so say all of these are in here, then whatever catalogs you have, you will sell for the value of whatever they may be, and then they will all come into your back catalog. Then what will happen is you will go through and figure out who has the most of each symbol, and then we will just go ahead and start left to right. Okay, so we'll start with this one. This one is in sixth place, so whoever has the most from this one will be losing $20. So we have one, two over here. We have one, two, three over here. So this person would have to take $20 and return it to the bank. Obviously, there'd be more money than that. Five player might look more like that. Uh, so then we do that. So then we will go to the pink. We have one, two, three, four over here, and then one, two. So this player, we find where pink is located. Pink is in second place. So this player will then get $30. So, so on and so forth until we've scored all of them. And then whoever has the most amount of money is the winner of the game. Okay, so that is the basic for Comic Book Bubble. So what do I think about it? I really do enjoy this game. It is a nice family weight level game of economics where you can buy low, sell high sort of thing. And I do like this theme. It is a very unique theme. It's not one that you see very often. And I just, I like all these unique artworks. Every card is different. And I just, I really enjoy just all the different artwork on the cards. And yeah, that was a lot of pink for my pink screen. Something I do also really like is buying. You have to time that well because you can't have more than three catalogs. So you'll want to, you know, do your superpowers and speculates for a little bit, but you also want to have as much to sell as you can, but you can't, once you buy, you can no longer sell. So that push and pull of when do I want to buy this comic? Because these don't change during the round. They do change at the end, 
but as you're buying them, the value is set. So you might be able to buy this comic for $8, but sometimes throughout the round, it will end up here at the $3 range. So maybe now is not the time to buy something with that purple question mark symbol, which something I do really like is while it is color coordinated, it is also colorblind friendly which these are, of course, prototype. I do believe that they will have these symbols on this as well, so that will make it completely colorblind friendly. And of course, all the symbols are on here too, which makes it really nice. I really do like that. It's very easy to follow. This graphic design is very nice. You know this is the way you're moving normally, and then this is the one that you react when you're doing that switch thing. You know you're going this to there. You know that that's the order that you're doing it in. And these player aids are just, it shows you the end of year scoring. So you'll want to try to get, if you have a whole lot of purple, you want to make sure that purple is as high up as it can be. So that way it will be the first place so you can get $40 instead of it being all the way down here where you're going to lose $20. And I do like how that's very clearly laid out. I like how it's very easy to tell what the different dollar amounts are. It's very easy to read this. There's no graphical design issues that I have whatsoever. The cards are very easy to see what it is going, what it is doing. Like, okay, that symbol, you get three more dollars. This round sells for three more dollars. Then it's valued this round. It tells you right on the card, which I really like but the symbols themselves are really easy to understand even. I do find this a nice, fun, family-friendly, economic board game with a very unique theme. Like, I don't see comic books very often in the gaming world. I know there's a few out there, but not too many. So I do really like that it's just as a fresh look and just I can't get over how awesome this artwork is. So but this is an eight and a half out of 10. So I do really like it. I want to play it more. I want to play it. I want to learn how the solo rules have not been released yet. So I want to learn how this will play solo, see how that feels. But do bear in mind that this is a prototype. So definitely check out the Kickstarter and see what that has until the Kickstarter link will be in the description below. But until next time, just remember to have fun, be present, and be you. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to us. We would love to hear from you. Also, if you find value in our content, please like, comment, or subscribe. Let a friend or family member know that we exist. Help us spread our channel and bring remote gaming to a table near you. Thank you very much and have a great day.